This podcast was produced by Sean Western Media. From a dimly lit cupboard somewhere in England, two people chat about communications. Sometimes they chat about other things. Welcome to From the Comms Cupboard. Is social media in-house important? Yeah, yeah. I would say so. It's like, uh, why should it belong to the young generation and the political gossips and the and revolutionaries? I think social media should be taken back by the workforce and turned into a corporate <laughs> weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's weaponize social media, if it isn't already. How do you do that? How do you, how do you make it important to people in a business? Well, all seriousness is that actually, I think, I think businesses need to take social media seriously. I would say, I think a lot of companies don't have a good impression of social media or think that it's not a worthy business tool. Mm. So you've seen examples in the past then when it's just not used. I've seen it not used at all. I mean, that's the worst example mm. I can think of. But where it's been misused is when you're lazy about social media. You put the same piece of information on every channel thinking, yeah, that'll do. Blanket coverage will do. And that's what you see out of businesses as well, isn't it? Yeah. You'll see companies just marketing, but creating the same piece of content. Same piece of content. Across every channel. Whereas that one piece of content can have a different audience and different uh, social channels. Let's take Twitter, for example. You put something on Twitter and you say, our CEO have a, has a chat this week with Adam Ant. Where has Adam been all this time? And I don't know. <laughs> that was a bit random. I'm thinking of my 80s playlist at the moment. You see. For the yeah, younger people out there, Adam Ant of uh, Prince Charming fame. Younger people. So then you come to Facebook and that message should be different. That that thing you put on Facebook, even if it's about the same content. So our, uh, this week, Adam Ant shares photos with our CEO. I'm making this simplistic, but it's about changing your piece of content to match a different audience. TikTok would be a video, you, you know. Adam Ant doing a dance routine. <laughs> Adam Ant doing a dance routine, routine with the CEO. <laughs> that, would, that would be good. That would be really good. That's a visible scene. Prince Charming. Prince Charming. And then you would have Instagram and it would be a photo of the CEO and Adam and holding a trifle. Yes, yeah, something they've baked together. Something they've baked together. Absolutely. So how do you get people in-house to use social media then? Well, that's a tough one because I think people think social media is mine. Yeah. I don't want them to infringe on my channels. That's my personal channel. So do you think do you think it's fair to ask someone to have more than one Twitter account or more than one Instagram account? Is that fair? I think there's different types of social media for in-house to out. out. And I think it, it's really useful to get people to follow an organisation and see what you're doing and mm. take it in that way. But you've got to have tools in-house as well. That is just for your community. Mm -hmm. um, they, they could still come from sort of Alice on Twitter, right? Mm. And then like everything the company sends out from its own social media mm. channel. But people don't do that. Why Why? Why is there a, a reluctance to do that for like your own to interact. company? Yeah. There's probably a fear, isn't there? Because, you know, you don't want to say the wrong thing mm. and then it's coming back to you. So if you, if you do say, I work for X company in your profile, it takes it away from you doesn't it so yeah it's becomes less personal and it makes you feel probably maybe makes you feel a little bit fake because you're not always going to agree with everything a company does so you don't like that one the selective <laughs> liking yeah maybe <laughs> yeah monitoring of liking you didn't like the post with adamant yeah <laughs> what was wrong with you why aren't you supporting the business but I've never heard anyone say that. <laughs> no, so that's, I'm sure. But, but people can still be afraid of it. Yeah, because afraid that that might happen. Because one day, you know, people don't really understand 
the boundaries, I guess. So it's, it's down to a good communications team to help people to understand it or, or make it important for them. So, yeah, you might want people to share and like and comment, but you don't necessarily want people to share a picture they shouldn't be and linking it to that business. So it's there has to be guidelines and rules, right? Hmm. But that, that pushes people away, doesn't it? Because they don't want their social media activity to have rules and guidelines. Yeah, because it's theirs. Mm. So surely it can only be about encouraging people to interact and promote. Yeah. I wonder if there's a percentage that some, that a marketing team would say is a that's a good percentage of mm. onboarding for people who are using our, our, our social media in house. Mm. Maybe it's maybe there's something around restricting what you should be doing like in terms of which channels so if it's linkedin hmm. that's a very business focused channel so that makes sense for people to, to talk about the business that they work for in real life examples yeah i think i always used to have a fear that i couldn't really talk about what my business was doing in a social context with the world or give even real examples because you were worried that you might be crossing some sort of line because what you do for your business might not necessarily be something that your business wants you to tell people about. And so the decision you inevitably make is you don't do so anything. You don't do it. You don't do anything. And then the marketing team who spent so much time setting up these channels mm. wonders why there's no interaction from employees, employees with the social media channels. Mm. So it is part of a communication department's job, isn't it, to try to link those things together and and say, no, this is a safe environment. Yeah. Please. Please take part. Take part, yeah. Sometimes, I guess, you would work for a company and you would enjoy working for them, but you wouldn't necessarily want everyone to know you work for someone. So I guess there are certain types of brands and organisations that you don't necessarily want to be forever linked to. Um, you may not endorse what they do. You may not endorse every decision that a business takes. But I guess you could also then say, well, you only endorse what you do endorse. You only you only like or comment on something that feels right for exactly. you. Exactly, yeah. Or well, something you can actually feel like you can say something about. Perhaps mm. it was a project that you'd worked on. I think that's a great thing to let the outside professional world at least know that you were a part of that Yeah, absolutely, project. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There's life beyond your current employer. There is. Maybe that's another reason people don't take part. They're, they're frightened of Putting coming off across your employers. <laughs> <laughs> Expendable. <laughs> I mean, I don't suppose it's so good if you're a communications professional and you uh, uh, have spelling mistakes in your comments. Or <laughs> exactly. Oh, I despair, you know, of of, of grammar. In, in, on social media channels, it's absolutely atrocious. There's also that other side from a professional perspective that something seems like it's been a success and then it comes out that it's later not and you've commented on it. But then know. things get lost. In oh, the... but things get dragged up too. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Unfortunately, social media lasts forever. So I think that's why there'd be reluctance. Um, you have to, to me, it feels like you have to give people reasons to do it. Yeah, I can think of a really big reason. A sales department. I think it, I think a good use of social media can be a lead generator for yeah. the business. Absolutely. But I've I've yet to come across a sales department that effectively engages with social media to, to mm. create leads. I haven't come across it yet. I think that's sad. It is sad. A missed opportunity. And it's something you can do as well. I've always been a sort of believer that if you work for an organisation, you should support them, you know, if... If you make chocolate, then buy that chocolate. If you generate electricity, then buy the electricity from the organisation you work for because otherwise you're helping competitors and, you know, that's not going to help you long term. So give people a good reason to do it. And it's something easy like sharing or content, or especially if it's a small organisation and promoting, you know, it spreads that out, doesn't it? So it's a yeah. good incentive. Yeah. You want people to be engaged in the success of that business and that's one way that they can do it. Anyway, back to the wine. 